Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it's Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope that you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I like to stop by every Saturday or so and team up with another crafty YouTuber for my Inspired Saturdays series. What we do is take a project that the other creator has made and we create a new project based in some way or inspired by that piece. Each of us keep our inspiration pieces a secret until the videos go live, so I will be discovering at the same time as you how I inspired my partner today. If you're a crafty YouTuber and after watching today's video, you would like to apply to join me for a week, I will link the video in the description box below that gives all of the details how you can do that. Now keep in mind, it was recorded last year, so I might mention the fall of 2020. Just know to kind of apply that to the first quarter of 2021. The application should be updated. I look forward to hearing from you soon. This week I'm teaming up with Cindy Ellen of the Cindy Ellen Robinson channel here on YouTube. I will have her channel as well as the video I took inspiration from linked in the description box below. But today I'm going to be taking an inspiration from her Countdown to Christmas Teeny Tiny Christmas Gnomes video. In this she created 3D gnomes and I'm going to apply that concept to a card and just make some that have a little bit of dimension, not necessarily 3D. Don't forget when you're done watching my video today to go see how I have inspired Cindy Ellen. I will have her video linked at the very top of the description box below. Before I get started, I wanna talk a little bit about the products that I'll be using, and if I add anything later on in the video, I will make sure to let you know. For my pattern papers, I got out the Simple Stories Vintage Bliss 6x6 pad, and I did pre-select three of the papers from there. To make my gnome, now again, this is a total, I'm hoping this works, like this could go horribly wrong and it could go wrong together. But to make my gnome, I got out some of my Spellbinders Nestability dies, and I plan on using the largest circle. And I also got out this little glue bottle die that I got for free in a recent Tailored Expressions order. And I'm going to use that little oval for part of the gnome. Since I couldn't find like maybe the one gnome stamp set that I own because you know I'm in the middle of a reorganization, I went ahead and made myself some sentiments on my computer and I did print those out in a couple different sizes and orientations. I'm not quite sure yet which one I'm going to use. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing some cutting. The first piece I cut was one of the 6x6 pattern papers, and I cut this at 4 and a quarter inches wide by 5 and a half inches tall to fill the front of the card. I thought the wood grain and the flowers went nicely with a gnome theme. Next, I got a scrap of off-white cardstock, and I cut that to 3 and a quarter inches wide by 4 and a half inches tall. Then I wanted to cut a small mat for that, so I chose that kind of yellowish green pattern paper and I cut that to three and a half inches wide by four and three quarters inches tall. And next I brought in my piece of blue pattern paper and this will end up being my gnome's hat. I wanted to make sure that the strip I cut for my die was wide enough, so I just brought that die in with the pattern paper to decide how wide to cut this. I brought in my cuddle bug to do some die cutting and here in just a little bit some embossing and the first thing I did was cut a circle from that blue pattern paper. This circle is about three and a quarter inches wide if you're interested in trying this for yourself. 
Once that was done, I then brought in a scrap of white cardstock and cut it using that same circle die. And finally for the die cutting, I brought in that little Tailored Expressions glue bottle and I cut it once from the center of that yellowish green pattern paper. Because the center of this will not be seen, it's going to be a mat for that cardstock. This is a great way to add a little bit more color to the card and not have to use any more pattern paper. And now it's time to start making our gnome. Now keep in mind I had not done this before so it was kind of a little experiment, but I did know that I could get a dunce cap shape from a circle. So that's where I was going with this because I know it's a cute little gnome, but their hats do kind of look like dunce caps. First, I folded that piece of white cardstock in quarters. So you just fold it in half, open it up, fold it in half the other way. I did reinforce each of those folds with my bone folder because later I will be using those to help me trim these down. Then I brought in the blue pattern paper, which will be the gnome's hat. And this one I folded into eights. So this one was a little bit trickier. When you went to do each fold, you do need to make sure that you're kind of lining up where your previous folds were so you get eight nice even sections on that circle. Next, I brought in my little Fiskars Photo Bypass Trimmer to help me cut these down. If I line up the fold along the edge where it folds over that metal cutting bar, that is exactly where my guillotine blade will trim. So I just lined up that center cut and sliced this blue one in half. Then I brought in my white cardstock and I sliced this in half and then sliced it in half again because I do only need a quarter of this for the final piece. Once that was cut in fourths, I brought back in the blue half circle and I cut one more eighth off of this. So I end up with three eighths of a circle to work on my final gnome hat. I could have just cut that circle in eighths and used one of those for the gnome hat, but because I did want a little dimension, I decided to do it this way. To cut down a little bit on the bulk, I did cut about two thirds of that right triangle off. I just need a small sliver to adhere the other flap to. I brought in my art glitter glue with that fine tip point, placed some of that on that little flap edge, and then I folded over that second full triangle. This way when it is dry, it will open up and have a little bit of dimension. I then sat that aside to dry while I worked on my little gnome beard. For that beard, I'm gonna be using the white quarter circle from before. I took my fine tip scissors, and just to make the beard look a little bit more realistic, I decided to give him some actual hairs and not just leave it a solid white. I started by snipping about a third of the way into the semicircle and just did that around the entire outside edge. Now I will tell you later, I have to go back in and extend all these cuts. So you might want to go more like 50 to 60% into this. Just make sure that you leave yourself enough room so you can place some adhesive at the top of this triangle. Once I had all of those cuts made, I then fanned that out just for a little bit more texture. The hat has had enough time to dry now, so we're going to finish putting together our little gnome. I will end up placing the beard on the front inside of the hat. If you place it at the back, then it's not going to hide your foam pieces later for dimension. I just put a little spot of adhesive on the front and then place that pushed all the way inside of my gnome hat. And again, I pushed that and adhered it to the front. To make my gnome look just a little bit more gnomey looking, he did need a little haircut. So I got out my fine tip scissors once again, and I just trimmed his beard so it looks more of like an ice cream cone now. So far, I was really liking the way my gnome was turning out. And here's where we're gonna make him just a little bit more dimensional. I could have just put foam tape on the back of this and popped it up off the card, but I made that cone shape on the top for a reason. 
I ended up placing two Stampin' Up! dimensionals on the inside back of that hat. That way I just had a little bit of lift so his hat and his beard were separated, giving it a more rounded shape when I put it on the card. And now my gnome needs a finishing touch. Can you guess what it is? It's his nose. And this is where that glue bottle die came into play. That little oval worked perfectly for this gnome's nose. At this point, I decided that the hairs on my gnome needed to be cut just a little bit longer. So I carefully went into each slit and just cut it a little deeper. Now while I'm doing this, I thought I would ask the QOTV or the question of the video. I know I've already said it before, but I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know each of you just a little bit better through these questions lately. Today's question is, do you own a die cut machine? If so, what kind is it? Is it manual, electric, or electronic? Make sure that if you do answer this question to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV in your answer so I know you want me to see it. You have already seen one of my die cutting machines today and it's probably the one I use the most frequently. This is a cuddle bug. It's no longer in production, but I've had this thing for going on probably 15 years. I don't know. I got it when it first came out and it is a workhorse. I also have a mini die cutter from Spellbinders. I got it on clearance and it cuts pieces of paper that are probably two and a half or three inches wide. And then finally, I have an electronic die cutter. Mine is the Silhouette Cameo. Speaking of die cutting machines, I got back out my cuddle bug and I added some texture to the piece of off-white cardstock with a dots embossing folder. Off camera, I cut and folded an off-white card base, and now that all of the pieces for the front were ready, I went ahead and decorated this. The embossed piece got matted with that yellow-green pattern paper, that got placed on the center of the wood and floral paper, and then this all got placed onto the front of the card. Now that I knew how much room the gnome would take up on the card front, I could choose the sediment. And I went with the single line that reads, there's no one like you. I went ahead and trimmed this down so it was three quarters of an inch tall. And that way it's going to fit into my Stampin' Up! Pick a Banners punch. Once I had that cut down, I could just punch both ends of that piece. And then I had nice fishtail ends. To adhere my gnome to the card, because again, I do want that lift to stay what it is and not adhere it flat down. I brought in my glue lines. These are just like glue dots, but they're long skinny lines. I think they're probably an inch long. I placed one of those on the back center of the gnome hat, and then I placed that as centered as possible toward the top of the card. Once that was in place, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape. This is the 3 8 inch width. I put a strip of that on the back of the sentiment and then placed that centered below the gnome. Now that tape I use, if you're here often, you see me use it. I find that on Amazon and it's super economical. I will put links in the description box below if you want to check it out. And finally, this card needs a little sparkle. I brought in some pink glitter enamel dots and I spread five of those just throughout the front of the card. I put two sets of two together and then a single one. Having five on here, is more pleasing to the eye because it is an odd number of embellishments. Here's a close up look at the finish card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how Cindy Ellen inspired me today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to go visit her video as well to see how I inspired her. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.